Do you believe that tonight? Yeah. Every day with you, Lord. James 2.23 says Abraham believed. How many believers here tonight? And it says it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. I thank God that he calls us his friends. In spite of all that we have done, if we'll only believe, say only believe, only believe, only believe. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Not to hear me. When I call Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing you're from, whoever you are, welcome to our morning's devotion. Welcome to this time when we go into a time when we focus on God to and worship Him and meditate on His words. And at this time, I want to say thank you for joining us at this moment when we can spend this time with our God. As you know, we will continue our morning's devotion as usual as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness and for your grace. Thank you that we are alive, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, at this moment that you will guide me to speak whatsoever you will have me to speak. 
I pray that, Lord, you will help me to do whatsoever you will have me to do. Have your way, Lord, in this devotion. And I pray that lives will be touched who are viewing. And even those who will view at some other point, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, once again, thank you for joining us one more time as we continue to examine the topic be -E reconciled be -E reconciled if you look in romans chapter 5 verse 10 romans chapter 5 and verse 10 it says for if we were yet enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life reconciliation when you think of the word reconcile you think of restoration of friendship or relationship you see brothers and sisters forgiveness is good but reconciliation goes beyond forgiveness because reconciliation goes to a level of restoration of relationship because a person might be wondering wow maybe i can use the word reconciliation as a synonym for forgiveness but the truth is they are not exactly the same thing they are not the same thing because i can forgive but still i might not necessarily reconcile with the other person forgiveness may sometimes be a one-way thing because I can choose to forgive you, but at the same time, our friendship might not necessarily come back because the other person might decide that they don't want to be friend again. Them not like me, me not like them. The person might decide that why they don't want to be any more friend with you again. And so forgiveness and reconciliation, they are not exactly the same thing because in relationship it takes two to come back hallelujah in rest reconciliation it takes two it takes it involves both party amen both parties have to be willing to re to reunite to reunite again and to be back in the state of friendship that they once had and so thanks be to god that the greatest example of reconciliation is that God gave us his son so that we can be reconciled unto him. Amen. God is always good, you know. God is always loving. But you know, we as human, the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, that we were like sheep gone astray, everyone to our own way. The Lord lay on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Isaiah 59, verse 2, it said, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have. And because of your sins, he hid his face from you, and that he will not hear. Amen. And so, what we should realize is that reconciliation, it has to deal with restoration. Amen. You see, we are enemies, the Bible said. We were enemies. Those of us who are Christians now, thank God, we are no longer enemies. But a person might say, wait, me no fight war with Iraq. But uh, me no use gun, me no use bomb. Amen. Me no use ice brick, me no throw acid, me no do no farm of things like that. I am not a soldier. Why am I an enemy? Why do they call me an enemy? Why, why, why? I have never, I have never back a ratchet off a man yet. I have never draw a gun after a man yet. But does that necessarily mean that you're not an enemy? Well, those are not the only things that make you an enemy. But did you know that from the moment you were born, we were natural enemies of God? Amen. From the moment we are born, we were born with a sinful nature, born in sin and shaken in iniquity. And so you don't have to do anything to become enemies. From the moment you were born, we were natural enemies. And so you remember because of Adam, because of one man's sin, many 
became sinners. And from that time to now, the human race have been gone astray. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it also went to say, not one is righteous. No, not one. And so it doesn't matter who you are or where you are from. If you are a sinner, if you have not yet been born again, you are an enemy of God. But the good thing is that, listen what Romans 5 said. He said, for if we were yet enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Amen. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The good thing is that even though we were enemies, God saw a way to make us his friend again. Amen. And so I heard Lubert Levy did a song and said, Me and Jesus turn back friend. Again, again, again. Amen. And so we have to become friends with God again. And the only way we can become friends with God is through the death of his son. We can be reconciled through Jesus Christ. The Bible recognized Abraham even though he was in the Old Testament. But the Bible said that Abraham believed it and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. It also said, according to the book of James, it also can be found in the book of Isaiah, that Abraham is the friend of God. My brothers and sisters, do you know what it means to be a friend of God? Amen. You see, when you're a friend, you think of loyalty. You think of somebody who is close. You think of somebody who you can trust. A true friend. The Bible said a friend loves it at all times. And so, because of Jesus Christ, we can become his friend. What a beautiful thing. Amen. When a sinner who has been lost in sin, who has been deep in sin, plunge heading towards hell, when they can be restored, their relationship can be restored with God and we can be reconciled unto God. The thing is, you know, God is always a loving God. So that was not the problem. Amen. God was always a loving God. God was always a kind God. But there is a problem with sin. Sin has caused a problem and that has caused a problem when it comes down to the justice of God. Amen. You see, in order for us to be accepted by God, according to his justice, he have to allow his son to die because God must punish sin. Amen. God have to punish sin. Amen. And so, in order to satisfy the justice of God, in order to appease his wrath, in order for us to have a propitiation for our sins in order for us to be restored to have peace with God he had to allow his son to die so that we can be reconciled unto him you see God could not shut one eye and say all right yeah man make them go on make them go on make them go on eh -eh, God couldn't do that you know I said no man make it go on make it go on you know what God had to do God had to allow Jesus his son to be offered as a sacrifice to satisfy the requirements that he need so that we can be reconciled. Amen. And so forgiveness is good, but reconciliation goes further than forgiveness because reconciliation goes to the sense of restoring broken relationship and restoring friendship. Amen. Because as I said before, I can forgive somebody now, but the person decides them no, I no friend again. Them no one talk to me again. Them no business with me. And all they call me, call them and say, me sorry, me sorry. Oh my God, I'm sorry, man. My friend, I'm sorry. And you do everything you want. The person said, me no like them. Them no like me. Me no like them. And even when you go back and tell them, say, brother, me still like, me still love you. And I want to be your friend again. The person no must be friend again. So you see, reconciliation goes from two sides. Both of the parties must come to agreement that they're going to reconcile and restore their friendship. Amen. The Bible also goes as far as to say in Romans chapter 12, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. That is the NLT. 
you live in translation. Amen. And so we as Christians, we should do all that we can to live peacefully with our brothers and sisters. But the truth is, is not every time that it might work. Because I can call you. I can send a message to you. But you decide to say, you know what, I'm afraid again. And so sometimes reconciliation may not necessarily always work out. But thank God that it worked out with us and him. And so even in our lives as Christians, between us, in our relationship, in our friendship, as we live from day to day, we have to ensure that we reconcile whenever we fall from our friendship. We have to try our best. The Bible even also said in Matthew 5 that if you, according to the NLT, if you are presented a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, you should leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and reconcile to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Amen. And so reconciliation is also a requirement for true worship. You look at it. Because when you go to worship God, you know, God is not just looking at what you're saying. God is not just looking at your eloquence. God is not just looking at how articulate you are and how much your vocabularies are good and how much you can speak. But God is looking at your heart. And so you have to ensure that the condition of your heart, the condition of your heart is okay. Because God is very concerned about the condition of your heart. So if your heart is not right with God, your worship will not be right with God. So you might shout, you might jump, you might kick and do all manner of things. But my brothers and sisters, Man looketh at the outward appearance, but God looketh at the heart. Amen. And so sometimes you might be worshipping God. You remember, I said, boy, such and such people um, have problem with you. And you never really go, go back and make it up with them. It could be that somebody, um, maybe, you might, somebody might, um, you might owe somebody probably $50,000. The person I called you from last week Sunday and can't get you till now. Then call you Monday, then can't get you. Then call you Tuesday, then can't get you. And then say that in mind, I must kill a boy then. I must kill him, man. Wait till I book him. And so you are hiding from the person because you owe them $50,000. And then now, past Sunday morning, you jump, take up your Bible, run gone to church. Go worship God same way, like nothing happened. You worship God as if everything is okay. But the Bible said that if somebody have art against you, you should first make it up first. So even before you go to church Sunday morning or Saturday, don't just run to church, but call the brother and say, look at man, you know, say, boy, I don't have no money, though. I really want to pay, you know. But boy, you know, say things rough, though. Boy, I struggle. Me can't really find it right now. I beg you, give me some more time, man. Beat me, I beg you, too. When you do that, at least you can reconcile with your brother. And then you can go with a heart of freedom, with a heart that is free to worship God. So remember, you know, you don't have to vex with people for God to have a problem with it. It is not just about what you are doing, but what the person, the heart that the person has against you. So you don't have to be the one that vex with the person. But if you have somebody who have heart against you, you should go back and make it up with that person. Don't overlook it and say, me no business with them. Me I worship me, my God. Me no business who want vex, vex, who want bus, bus. Me no business with them who want vex. You don't want to go that road because guess what? The relationship that you have with others will affect the way you relate to God. Amen. It will affect your fellowship with God. So it's not just about your hallelujah. It is not just about your thank you Jesus and what you do in church but it's about what you do with your brothers and sisters outside of church. And so we have to be very careful because we don't want to be that type of worshiper who worship with our lips and our hearts are afar off. 
And so we have to be careful when we approach the place of worship. When we go to God to worship him, we must ensure that we make it up with our husband, with our wives, with our children. Don't leave your church family. and Don't leave your family vex. Like vex and vex. And then you run out of your house, gone to church, leave them same way. And gone to worship God. Your husband vex, mad with you. Your children vex and mad with you. And guess what? You take your Bible, you run out of church, run out of your house, and gone to church. Me no business with them. If one, if them want vex, them vex. Me no one wants me to worship my God. I want to give you a joke. Did you know that you are violating the principle that God has set out in his word? It is not just what you do to God, but what you do to your brothers and sisters. As, 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 most, as much as you did to one of these, my brethren, you did it also unto me. And so we have to be careful because reconciliation is very important when it comes on to true worship. Our heart must be reconciled with our brothers and sisters so that when we go to God, there is no endurance, no form of obstruction for true worship to go up unto him. So we have to be careful. I remember Esau and Jacob. You would have remembered the story very well. Esau took the birthright. As you, uh, sorry, Jacob took the birthright from Esau. As you know, Esau was hungry. And he sold the birthright. That, but, but that was not the only part of it. Also, you know that in the last part, Jacob pronounced the blessing. Upon, Jacob wanted to pronounce the blessing upon Esau. And you know that, I'm um, sorry, um, Isaac wanted to pronounce the blessing upon Esau. But we saw where Jacob went and he deceived his father and took the blessing, hallelujah, that Esau should have gotten. And we saw that through both of these experiences, we saw that Esau became bitter. Amen. He was so bitter. And he, it came to pass where Esau decided, look here, man, I'm going to kill Jacob. Amen. And we saw where Jacob flee away from, uh, Jacob run away from Esau. When Jacob run away from Esau, the time went on and on and on until one day, Jacob decided to reconcile with his brother Esau. But it was not easy. We saw where Jacob prayed to God and Jacob was afraid that Esau would came back and attack him and his family. So it was not any better for us to go back and meet a man who you take, you take his birthright, you take his blessing that should have been given to him. It was not easy. And so Jacob went and he gave some animals to Esau gave animals um, some flax to him. And we saw that during the time when he approached Esau, they hugged each other and they wept and they were reconciled with each other. So even though Esau wanted to kill Jacob, but thanks be to God that through the process of time that they were able to reconcile, they become friends again. They met with each other. They hugged each other and they wept. Brother, it was a hard experience. Imagine your big brother take away, where you, your small brother take away, where you should I get? And run down to California and live. And then one day, you buck him up again. Amen. You should have gotten $20 million. But your brother took it and run away. And when you look, you buck him up back in California. You could have, you could have planned to kill him. You could have planned to get a gun or something. But thank God that Esau, when he buck up, Jacob, he did not consider to murder his brother or attack his family, but he decided to reconcile with Jacob. They met each other and they wept and they cried. And so today, just like how Esau and Jacob were reconciled, let me ask a question. Is there anyone here today that you have in your heart from 1985? 1995, 2005, 2010. Is there anyone that you need to reconcile with? And you might say, but wait, I can't have nothing against them. Me not eat them. Me not eat them. Me not eat them. Me, them. me, me have nothing against them. But could it be that they have something against you? Could it be that you did them something from years ago? 
and they are suffering in their heart. They are hot. They are hungry. They are cross and miserable. Could it be that they are bitter and they would like to meet you again? Could it be that they are planning to even do something to you? Could it be that you are the one who need to go back and reconcile with them? Tell them that you love them and that you would like to have of your friendship being restored with them again? Could it be that there's somebody that you need to call today in Miami? Could it be that somebody you need to call in UK? Could it be that there's somebody you need to call in Canada and tell them, say, look here, man, a long time, boy, me do your thing, you know. Me know say you're vexed still, but boy, sorry, me sorry, man, boy, me know say a long time for we had picked your group, you know. Boy, me did walk over by you, you know, and hold on your pity them. A long time, boy, me I rush with witchcraft by your people, man. A long time, boy, me I, me I do them things to your family. Boy, you know, see, I made it do that to your family. Or such and such, boy, me I tell you, me I beg you, forgive me, you know. Could it be that there's somebody that we need to reconcile with so that our life will become a sweet savior and acceptable unto God so that when we go before God, there is no form of cobweb. There is no form of jonjo, no form of ignorance that will block our worship from going up as a sweet-smelling Savior that God will look down from heaven and accept it with great joy and welcome. And so today, even the prodigal son, it reached a point where he said, I must go back to my father's house. And when he went back, according to the parable, his father was willing to reconcile with him. He saw him and he embraced him and he ran and he, and he hugged him and met him. And so today, if you're not a Christian, you can reconcile with God. Amen. You can reconcile. If you are not a Christian, you can reconcile. You might say, well, me no hate God, me love God. But if you're not a Christian, you are an enemy of God. You might say, well, I have been to church for so many years now. I was born in such and such church. My mother has brought me to church every Sunday. Oh, yes, that's good. And oh, yes, I have been to fasting. I have been to revival service. I have been to convention. But I want to tell you the truth. If you're not a Christian, you're still an enemy, an enemy of God. Not until you accept Jesus, the Son of God, and believe in him, so that when God looked down on you, he does not see your sin, but he will see the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which came forth through him and not the sin and filthiness of your life. And so today, as I close, I want to encourage every one of us to make sure that we reconcile with God and also with our friends, with our neighbors, and with all that we have as much as possible. Let us do our part in trying to reconcile. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this ministry of reconciliation. We thank you that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you that don't matter how far we are in sin, how much hostile we may be against you, your blood and your love has been enough to restore us in this wonderful relationship that we are able to be reconciled and restored from all our sins and sinful deeds and sinful nature that we have. We thank you, God, that it doesn't matter who we are and where we are from, you are able to reconcile us and bring us into a friendship that we can say that I am a friend of God. I pray, oh God, today that you will help somebody to become a friend of God. I pray that you will touch somebody today, God, somebody who is watching and somebody who may watch further on. I pray that you will help somebody who is not yet a Christian, that they will become a friend of God that they will no longer be hostile, no longer be rebellious, no longer stay in the sinful nature, but that they will hear your words and humble themselves and seek you with your whole heart. I pray, O oh God of heaven, that you will help somebody to reconcile 
with you. Lord of heaven, I ask today that your Holy Spirit will work in the life of people, that people's life will be changed so that we will be able to say it was good for us to receive Jesus Christ and we can receive and enjoy a full and free salvation. Thank you, God, for today. Have your way in all our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for viewing at this time. I want to thank Dorothy. I want to thank Davy, Vaughn, my friend Vaughn. I want to thank Carmen. I want to thank Charm, Reed, and all those who have commented. Thank you very much for commenting at this time. And I want to thank all those who, who have not, may not comment, but maybe you have listened for a minute or two or probably the entire session. Thank you for spending this time with our God. For whatsoever we sow, that's what we are going to reap. And so join us tomorrow as we continue to examine this ministry of reconciliation, as we continue to look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Join us tomorrow. And remember now, have a good and godly day. And don't forget to read your Bibles and pray. God bless you.